past. The greater thief. Like the Ark, the destroyer appeared as a comet in the sky. We spotted it much sooner than we did the Ark, because of its size. But we mistook it for an asteroid. Again. It was almost the size of Great Britain. A collision with the Earth would be catastrophic, several hundred times worse than if the Ark had just hit the planet without using technology to reduce its impact. Hawaii, the predicted impact point, was evacuated, and so were the coastlines of the countries of the Pacific, anticipating a powerful tsunami. Doomsayers were everywhere. After the Ark, you could hardly blame anyone for assuming the world was about to end. And besides, they turned out to be right. A military strike was planned to destroy the asteroid. It would be televised worldwide. I was kind of excited to see that. We didn't try to destroy the Ark when it was passing by the Earth. Now I got to see nuclear strikes try and destroy this giant lump of rock. My family watched it happen in town. A screen and projector had been set up outside the council offices. They had even planned celebrations for after the asteroid was destroyed. I was 11 then, and the prospect of a massive natural disaster really did hold my interest. I don't really think that way now. The attack on the asteroid was supposed to take two stages. Stage one was a missile attack that would push the asteroid off course. China, the United States and Russia all fired dozens of long-range missiles. The explosions filled the sky for a day and a night, and I watched them through binoculars and on television. The news broadcasts all focused their cameras on the asteroid during the final set of explosions, each obscuring the target for a few seconds. They filled the airtime by showing us a 3D representation of the asteroid being pushed onto its new trajectory away from Earth. After each missile hit the target, the trajectory line moved a little bit, until finally, late at night, it was clear, and we had succeeded at pushing it away. Now we wouldn't even need the second stage, which would just been an all-out assault with every nuclear missile to try and destroy the rock completely. The asteroid was now going to miss the Earth. The problem was solved. People cheered all around the world in a celebration like New Year's. We were saved. We fought. That elation only lasted about five minutes. As the news broadcasters traded joyful anecdotes, the 3D trajectory tracker showed something none of us were prepared for. The asteroid's course bent, almost willfully, back to its original path. As we celebrated in town, someone next to us yelled, That's impossible! Then we saw something we'd never forget. A layer of stone and ice broke off the asteroid, and underneath, a shiny metallic core was revealed. We recognised the shape right away, and we were all terrified by its immensity. People all around us screamed in town. I was afraid too. Our governments responded quickly. They shot nuclear missiles at the former asteroid. Each time a warhead hit the ship, the sky lit up with the intensity of the sun, but the destroyer took no damage, aside from scorch marks. Ironically, the pattern of scorches vaguely resembled a skull on its surface. Death. The ship pierced our atmosphere with a powerful pop that resonated around the world. The shockwaves rattled skyscrapers and tossed satellites off their orbits. Then the destroyer stabbed the planet like a knife, its blade driven into the Hawaiian archipelago. The cut was so clean that there was no flash of light like the Ark's landing. The crust of the planet split cleanly, and magma oozed up around the edges of the destroyer. For a moment, there was this shimmer around the ship. We found out later this was the way the ship absorbed all the energy of impact without destroying the planet it had come to steal from. Steam rose around the vessel as the oceans boiled and obscured our view. Several tectonic plates slipped all around the planet, and a terrible chain reaction of earthquakes rippled everywhere. On the opposite side of the planet, volcanoes erupted suddenly, even the Ark, still embedded in Iceland, bobbed from the surge of pressure throughout the Earth's mantle. Then a tidal wave rolled out from the ship, sweeping across the Pacific and crashing upon the shores of Japan, North and South America, Australia, New Zealand and Alaska. Millions were hurt or killed. Two days later, the ship began leaching our natural resources, just like the Ark had tried to do. The destroyer would never stop. It would take everything from our world. Thank you for listening to this chapter from Stolen Futures. Please like or comment on this video and subscribe to The Eighth Plot so you don't miss out on the next instalment of this book. Goodbye.